Today on What's Up Close Up, hear about one student's veteran story on taking a deployment tour to Korea. Find out what new restaurant has been in the top of the town up next on Close Up. Welcome to Winthrop Close-Up. My name is Ashley Briggs. And I'm Jacqueline Fuller. Returning back on campus since his deployment, Cal Bruce tells Close-Up about his decision to join the military and his experiences overseas. Reporter Christina Houseworth has the full story. Many may envision a student veteran to be the older classmate in the back of the classroom, commonly wearing hats from tours such as Desert Storm, or maybe even World War II. Since I've been in the military, I have been more disciplined. And I say I'm a whole new person, really. I'm not a slacker anymore. It just, it just put, a different, put, put me in a different uh, perspective. Since being enacted in 1944, the Servicemen's Readjustment Act, commonly known as the GI Bill, has been a way to help those who have proudly served our military transition from boots to books. I have been back for a week now, and I'm just now getting uh, adjusted. I will say, Winthrop has the best faculty and staff right now. But, um, I, I never have any problems with them. They always help me out when I need it, especially overseas. I am Winthrop's liaison with the Department of Veterans Affairs. I think that Winthrop has a good group of student veterans. We don't have a huge um, student veteran population, um, mainly because we're not close to a base. I mean, we most people who veterans who are, who are here have some connection to Rock Hill. Bruce is among 320 students who are receiving GI benefits at Winthrop, and that number is only expected to increase as the years go by. Christina Houseworth, Winthrop Close-Up. We would first like to thank Bruce for his service. Bruce took an online class while servicing and didn't take a break there. Once he came home, he enrolled into another class even with the tour, Bruce is still expected to graduate this May. Speaking of occupations, Winthrop held its fall annual career fair and graduate school fair. It is a semi-annual event that gives senior graduates an opportunity to plan their next steps after graduation. The fair was a chance to network with the career professionals, meet with different employers, and obtain insight of different graduate schools in the area. Meet a lot of students, and it's really fun to kind of meet a student and be able to work with them from kind of the recruiting process, the application process, then actually get into the school. It's kind of a very rewarding process to actually help people do that with their lives. And seniors are kind of looking for the more immediate things. Sophomores and juniors just might be coming to get some more information. And it's never too early to start looking at things. The Career and Graduate School Fair offered various tables from volunteering programs, the York County Sheriff's Posse Mounted Patrol, and several local businesses that were looking to fill positions with graduating students. Keep an eye on Winthrop website for another career fair in the spring. There has been a large amount of exciting establishments coming to Rock Hill lately and it just got better. Students are constantly Students are constantly looking for new places in Rock Hill that will save them a trip to Charlotte. Reporter Jacqueline Fuller tells us about a local restaurant just 10 minutes from campus. Looking for a spot to relax, have a drink with friends with an amazing view, or perhaps a location to hold a party. Pump House is a fine dining restaurant where you can select your dining experience. Um, the building itself was, the, hence the name of the restaurant, an old pump house. Uh, it was built in the 1940s to supply water to a nearby textile plant. Uh, our owners were, had the great idea of, of turning it into a restaurant. They purchased it in uh, 2014 and started a renovation project. After two long years of, of renovations, uh, we, we finally opened up in uh, March of early this year. So. The Pump House restaurant contains three floors that guests can enjoy. The third floor is a main dining area where you have a choice of dining inside or on the patio. The fourth floor is used for nightly dining or private events and its most significant feature, the rooftop bar. You must hit the uh, rooftop bar and watch the sunset. Uh, the service is great. The food and beverages are fantastic. 
It's uh, destination dining at its finest, and it's great for the city of Rock Hill. I'm a, my wife and I are big, big fans of, uh, of what's going on. Jacqueline Fuller, Winthrop Close-Up. Welcome back to Winthrop Close-Up. As the soccer season comes to a close, reporter Ashley Briggs gives us an update on the Eagle season. The Winthrop Eagles are preparing for kickoff against Longwood here at Eagle Field. The Eagles finished the season with a 5-10 record and a 2-6 record in the Big South Conference. Senior James Skonicky said the team faced a lot of injuries. Uh, a lot of ups and downs. Uh, rougher season, losing a lot of guys. Young team, you kind of expect it to go that way. Um, not how we planned it, but... Sophomore Evan Stout said the team's goal for next year is to go to the national tournament. Just in the spring, trying to practice, get better as a team, be prepared for next year, make the tournament, make a run. Of the national tournament. Skonicky tore his ACL two games ago, but he is proud to see his team take home the victory. Incredibly happy that we won. You know, it's uh, it's always nice to go out on a win. Um, wish I could have been out there; would have given anything. But it's, it's a good feeling. It's been hard, but it's been a learning experience. We've had, like I said, we have a lot of freshmen, and a lot of sophomores starting. So just getting them minutes, getting them uh, involved, you know, it's been tough, but we're starting to get there. The match went to the wire, but the Eagles beat the Lancers 3-2. to two. Ashley Briggs went the close-up. Here's to getting fit. Recreation Services team up with the Winthrop chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha for their first ever Friday Night Zumba. Those who brought their dancing shoes and t-shirts showed off their scariest dance moves in the glow of the night. The two organizations also wanted to bring students out on Halloween weekend in a new and healthy way. But today we really wanted to have just good, clean fun, and that's what we're doing tonight. Participants had the chance to make their own glow-in-the-dark shirts outside and move inside to do a little bit of grooving in a safe and healthy environment. Zumba, along with crafting indoors, is one of the many activities college students could do to have a safe and healthy Halloween next year. Every November 1st and 2nd, hundreds and thousands of people around the world celebrate the Day of the Dead. Originally, the ceremonies and celebrations were observed for two months by Aztecs. The Levine Museum of the New South put on an Aztec dance performance. To start the sequence, dancers perform the battle dance with features two, which features two Aztec warriors. When one of the warriors perishes, his soul greeted by another soul who leads him to his next life in the Aztec underworld where the dead dwell. A loving ritual full of joy and remembrance, all in Uptown Charlotte. Reporter Lexi DeMoya experienced the dead come alive at the Day of the Dead celebration. The Day of the Dead Festival was held October 30th at the Levine Museum of the New South in Uptown Charlotte from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. and was free of cost. Uh, and it's a Mexican tradition celebrating and honoring uh, our dead, uh, people that we loved but are no longer here with us. So it's an opportunity for us to celebrate their life. During the Days of the Dead, some believe that the souls of their departed return to Earth to visit with their friends and family. The is a three-day celebration where families and friends come together in remembrance of their loved ones. The holiday is celebrated throughout Mexico, particularly in the central and south regions, also by people of Mexican ancestry living in other areas, especially in the United States. Um, working with the Latin American Coalition for the last the past 13 years to celebrate Day Day of the Day of the Dead. Uh, this is our community festival. We open it up for the community. Uh, it's free. You get the chance to participate in crafts as well as performances from um, all throughout Latin America, but particularly from Mexico. So traditional dances and then also traditional crafts and an altar concert. Many people set up altars to honor those who have passed. They are usually decorated with flowers, candles, skulls, and photos. We learned about a tradition that uh, maybe people might be not too familiar with. So that's that. Go 
The rituals and celebrations are often colorful and varied, yet all carry the same message. Celebrating the Day of the Dead is a true celebration of life. This has been Lexi DeMoya, Winthrop Close Up. To find out more about the festival and information on the Day of the Dead, go to www.museumofthenewsouth.org. In addition to the festivals around Charlotte, how about a talent in the Queen City? Talking backwards? It's not a popular dream to become famous off of speaking backwards, but for the backwards dude, his dream became a reality. Rebet looks sad at the eat a serve and birth no. When is the best school ever. John Sevier has been speaking backwards since he was five years old. His strange hobby started when he accidentally played a record backwards and liked it. I've made a player piano play backwards, and I can sing with it as well. And the singing part's going to come a little bit later, but um, the whole point of the player piano is to say just because you play a song backwards perfectly doesn't mean that it will exactly sound forwards properly when you reverse it. Since then, he has started a YouTube channel and takes requests of phrases to say backwards. He uses an app to reverse the sound to prove he said it correctly. The Backwards Dude has a grown YouTube fan base and was featured on Charlotte Today. You can check out John Severe by looking up The Backwards Dude on YouTube. Honestly, if I could say anything backwards, I would probably just be saying it every day. Yeah, it had to take a lot of time and preparation to master that skill. Yes. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Winthrop Close Up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.